Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, we're going to start looking at this app that I've been wanting to talk about for over a year, and it's called Pocket Base. Now, these set of videos, I don't know how many there are going to be, probably two or three on Pocket Base, are going to be pretty hands on. And you're going to see that Pocket Base brings together a lot of the things that we did by hand and I've shown you before. Let's talk in. Let's jump in. So here I am at my web browser and we're going to head over to pocketbase.io. And as you can see, it says open source backend for your next SaaS and mobile app in one file. So backend, open source backend. So that's what we've been doing. We've been writing a lot of code and we've been showing like, hey, how do you connect to a database? How do you write RESTful endpoints using stuff like Fiber? Or how do you write it from scratch? All this stuff, those are backends. We weren't focused on front end how to connect to it. We're just talking about how do you represent APIs that you can call as a service. And so here, this is saying pocket base is an open source backend for your next SaaS software as a service. So imagine that let's say I want to um, build out a service that other people can call, right? A RESTful endpoint. And what is the service? It's going to allow you to upload a file as a user. If you're authenticated, you can upload a file. I'm going to do some fancy processing in the background with this file. And then I'm going to make it available for you to download. Maybe I'll send you an email with a link to say, oh, your file is ready to download. Or you can set up endpoints with all the fixing of um, authenticating users and all this other stuff. And also, of course, build um, front-end application. It doesn't have to be a mobile app. It's just any um, front-end you want to use. As a matter of fact, if you scroll all the way down, you can see that if you build in Flutter UIs, which can be mobile, they can be um, uh, desktop, they can be web, or Svelte, or Vue, or React, or even Angular, right? or just using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, whatever you want to build your UI. But the thing is, you have a backend, and that's what you're going to see. I don't want to do too much talking. I just want to like jump in and show you the different things. So that's what we're going to do over the next set of videos is just hands-on. And then you're going to see, because we've covered a bunch of these pieces before, so you're going to see how they come together here in um, Pocket Base. All right, so let's click on Documentation. And you can see here, you can download for x86, which is Intel and um, AMD based architecture. And then you have ARM. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click this and they're all zip files. So you can see it's downloaded for me. And now I can go to my command line and I'm going to unzip it. So here I am in a directory. I don't have anything in this directory. Um, so what I'm going to do is do unzip and I'm going to unzip that file that I downloaded. Three files are in there. Changelog, MD, markdown file, license MD. I don't need any of those. So I don't need the changelog file, markdown, the license file. So I'll just remove that. The only thing that's left is the pocket base file, which is an executable file for my Mac. It's already built for that. That's why they give you um, those things. So now I can do pocket base. And if I try to run it, you'll see um, at least on Mac, I have this issue that says, hey, you download a file. I don't know where it came from. It's unverified. Do you want to move it to trash? I think it's dangerous. We'll do cancel. And what we'll do on the Mac is go to system preferences. On Linux, you're not going to have this one issue. I don't know about Windows. You're probably not going to have that in, in Windows. And then I'm scroll all the way down. So we're going to see this thing, this warning about pocket base was blocked because it doesn't know who the developer is. We'll do allow. And then it's asking me for password to verify that all, you know, I'm an admin or something. So um, I accept that. Now, if I try to rerun Pocket Base, now I see a slightly different message. It goes, oh, you can move it still, um, but it asked me to confirm I want to open it. And I'm, I'm going to say open. And so let's just sort of zoom into this um, thing. And we can see that, uh, let's do this again. If I run Pocket Base again, now we can see all the subcommands. So we have an admin subcommand to manage admin accounts. We're not going to do that today. We have migrate, we're not gonna worry about that. We have serve and update. So why don't we just run update, see what we get. And it says already updated, which makes sense because there's the latest version we saw on the web page and we just downloaded this. So we're all up to date. So 
Pocket Base is so easy to get going. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. So if we look at some of our options here, we can see we have minus um, dev to enable dev mode. So I like doing that. So I'm going to do minus, um, minus, minus dev. And then we have um, the command that we can run, which is serve. So it says it starts a web server, which defaults to basically our local um, host and this port 8090. Of course, these things can be overwritten, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And we're just going to say serve. And if we run, as you can see, it spit out a bunch of stuff, which we don't have to worry about right now. We'll get back to some of that later. But the important thing here is at the end, it says that it started here exactly where it told us that it's going to start on by default. We have a API endpoint. And now you can start to understand when we build our own backend, what we had, it was running local hosts on some port. And then we group our endpoints on the API slash version one, version two, that, that, that. Here is just grouping whatever you're going to create on the API. We're going to see that later. For now, it's also telling us that you have an admin UI here with this underscore. So I'm going to open that in my browser. What open it? Because we just started up Pocket Base, so it's asked me to do that. So I'm going to create an account. So we'll say viral at email.com. It doesn't matter. It doesn't connect to anything. You can configure email and so on. We're not going to worry about that in today's video. But uh, for now, it doesn't matter. There's not actually a valid email. So I'm going to say viral.example.com. Um, not a valid email. Password, very secure. Very secure. And then I'll click, click on create account. And notice I have this admin dashboard. Again, a lot more than we would have had if we were trying to build out our own backend. Think about what we would have to do to, to, to build this out. We already see these are a set of collections. So this is collections. We have a users collection. There are no users right now. Um, we have a thing that we can search and query users. You have a way to edit this collection. You have API preview to see, show you how you can use this collection. We're not going to click on that just yet. You can click on new record here or there to add a new user if you want. Um, you can click on new collection here to add a new collection. We're going to do that in just a bit. You can see the logs and so on here you know, um, what happened against your server. Um, and there's some settings which we're not going to worry about today. So let's go back to collections. When we're doing Go Fiber, we build a microservice that had what? I think a items resource endpoint, um, endpoints for item resource and endpoints for a book resource. So let's just do the items one and just to show you how easy that is. So we click new. And so our resource or the collection where we're going to store things. So when I create a collection, that's where you could think of it like a database table. Pocket Base uses SQLite, which is a file based um, SQL server. So let's write our collection here called items. So right now you have three types of collection, base, view, and auth collection. I will explain the other types of collection when we cover them. But for now, just stick with base. And it's like the default, so just go with that. And then by default, you get these fields, ID, created, updated. So we want a new field. And let's say it's going to be text, and it's what? The name of our item. We can configure it a little bit further and say, well, is it required? Basically, it cannot be empty. We can put the max length, the max, um, min length, max length some regular expression to make sure that it's um, of a certain format, right? And so you can, of course, go here and you can duplicate it or remove it. And But we don't want to do that. We'll create another one. We'll call it description. And this is description of our item. And of course, this is a text field also, right? And we'll click um, create. And so now we have um, two fields. We have name. We have description. Um, we can, of course, um, toggle what we want to see here in the list. I'm going to add another um, field. I'm oh, sorry. I don't want to create a record. I'm going to go back to editing our collection. I'm going to add another field. 
this time I'm gonna say it's a number I'm gonna say price um, of course if I want to I can format it but I'm just gonna click save so now here's our collection just a few clicks we have someplace to store not only do we have a database but we also have API endpoints for using items so notice we can click on our collection user we can click on our collection items and we can click here to say um, how should we use this and pocket base has a client libraries for JavaScript and Dart. We're not going to look at JavaScript library today or Dart, but guess what? We can use the RESTful endpoint. Here's an example, slash get collections slash items and then slash records. And that will get all the um, items in that collection. And we have, um, so this is your list and search. What if you want to view a specific thing? API collection item records slash slash um, slash records slash colon ID, the ID for that specific thing. And create, same thing, update, delete. Real time, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but basically being able to monitor something and see where it changed. Okay, so you can subscribe to changes, sort of like, oh, you can subscribe to a subject in um, NATS. So let's close this and we don't have a record right now so let's add a new record so we can to leave mt for auto generated so we're going to do that and we're going to say item one is sure item number one and we'll click on create and of course we can create another item and we call it item number two create that and so notice how Quickly, we're able to have some, not only a database where we don't have to say what a database, you know, create the database, all this other stuff. All of that was done in the background. So how do we use um, this API to get these items? So if we go back here and we do like, you can use curl, but remember I like using HTTP IE, which I have shown how to install before. So I use HTTP and do colon zero um, 80 90 slash API slash collections slash items slash records. And if I run this, it's going to be a get. How do I know to get if I do minus V and let's open this. You can see it's a get slash on this API endpoint, right? And you can see here it says forbidden, which means, you know, I don't have permission. Only admins can perform this action. It's telling me exactly why it failed. So if I go back here, if I go here to edit collection, and then I go to API rule, on the API rule, you can see it says here for list query, right? So for listing things or getting a list of things, admins only. So we can say unlock this, and I'm not going to explain, but basically you can put an empty string, which means anyone can um, use it or you can just leave it empty. Um, and so this says, OK, anyone can get a list of all the items. Today, we'll just mark everything as unlock so that anyone could use it. So our endpoint is unprotected. And so now I click on save changes and now I go back here and let's clean up our screen and now I'll do this and notice it says 200 okay we've done all this before the thing that's different here is instead of just returning you a JSON array it returns you a JSON object with items as a field and the array representing all those items you can see it has page pagination already so it says page one or many items per page the total number of items, total pages. So a lot more information than even what we did. And notice for our items, it tell you which collection it belongs to. Now notice this name that it's using. Because you can go back and change your collection name very easily here, you can rename this collection to something else. That would really mess up users um, if you were to keep doing that, right? And so of course, sure, this endpoint wouldn't work anymore. But guess what? If users want to be insulated from you changing the collection name, they just use this instead, this collection ID here. 
and so let me paste that in and guess what it works just the same same thing with your ids remember we talked about this we don't want to be using like one two three we literally talked about this um recently and so now we have these ids that are somewhat random and i'm not claiming that our pocket base is using sortable ids but at least these ids make it so you can't really guess um what's next what's the next um item or how many items so let's copy this id for example and we saw that if you wanted to get a specific thing you just do this and you call it with the id and there you go there is the object for that one thing so once you call you're fetching one thing you get a json object that represents all the fields for that thing now pocket base can do a lot more you can say that when you're fetching i only want to fetch certain fields maybe you don't want if you have a really big record we're going to get into relations and all this other stuff so i wanted to make this video really quick just to show you just how easy it is to get up and going so if you were thinking about building an application instead of spending the time thinking through like oh how do i store my data blah 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 you can use something pocket based and know at least that part of the equation is taken care of for you now this doesn't mean you're not going to write any go code we will see how you can extend pocket base with go all right, I said that's gonna be it. I don't wanna keep this short, so that really is it. If you like this style of video and you're enjoying what I'm doing, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you have friends and or anyone else you know who can benefit from this information, please let them know. Um, send them a link. Um, it's really gonna help me if this channel can grow. And again, I wanna thank Mikhail for being a Patreon subscriber. And if you wanna, be one of our Patreon subscribers like Mikhail or support the channel in any other number of ways that is um, available. Here's a page that show you that. Anyway, I hope you've learned something. Take care, stay safe, see you in the next video. Bye.